Welcome back. I'm Libby Bowling with Pinellas County Communications. We've been talking about the threat of bad weather, but what do you do if something like a tornado or flood does happen? Pinellas County is prepared to help citizens in multiple ways. Joining me to talk about these services is Tim Burns, Division Director with Pinellas County Human Services. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Thanks for having me. And Iñaki Rizzola, Emergency Management Coordinator with Pinellas County Emergency Management. Thanks for joining us, Iñaki. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, we want people, something has happened right now, right. but really what we want to tell people is prepare ahead. Absolutely. The most important thing that anyone can do is to be prepared, to have a plan, to have a kit of supplies, uh, to know what to do should something bad happen, whether it's a single family house fire, El Nino, or a large event. Mm -hmm. And emergency management, you have a marvelous website that details preparation for every type of uh, Absolutely. Emergency. Everything to do with what happens with Fifi and Fido, to don't forget your medicines or if you have special needs, uh, to the listing of shelters for, the, again, the larger events. Mm -hmm. But obviously this is a, a different kind of a, a potential disaster, right? Right, exactly. We've got flooding. We could have possibly, you know, heavier weather that may Correct. include tornadoes. So how do people prepare for those types of emergencies? Well, I'm, I'm sure it's been talked about how the, the importance of having a weather radio or having apps on your phone that alert you because uh, this kind of, of uh, event could be no notice. Uh, you could have a lot of rain that occurs. Uh, you could have a tornado or a wind event. And, and you really didn't get the type of day's notice uh, like in a hurricane. Uh, so it's just important to first be aware, know what the weather is going to be that day, and, and then uh, uh, have those tools that alert you in case there's immediate danger. Mm -hmm. So if something has happened, yes. okay, and people have to leave their homes, and, and you know, in case they have to go to a shelter, what should they expect? Well, um, certainly the, the shelter that they're going to go to is probably going to be located uh, in, in a church hall, uh, a civic association's uh, meeting room. Uh, it, it could be a, a school. It could be a, a you know a gymnasium in a school or some uh, some other community center. Uh, but it's going to be a smaller event, you know, smaller kind of facility. Uh, but they they're going to expect a place that's going to be um, you know warm, hopefully, and safe and uh, not not wet. Uh, and uh, but there's going to be very uh, few uh, creature comforts. You know, they may have a cot, they may have blankets. But again, it's we want to make sure they're safe for that night. So our first goal is keep them safe bring them somewhere where they'll be okay for that night and try to meet their basic needs. Mm -hmm. And so emergency management does a lot of planning, Tim. I know that you're involved with planning for human services as a follow-up um, to emergency management's planning. How, did, how does that dovetail in? We coordinate very closely with emergency management. Uh, human services provides a lot of day-to-day -day services in the community. Um, you know, we're known for the mobile medical unit and a wide range of other things. But uh, what folks uh, don't necessarily realize is we're also considered the mass care lead. So that means that, it doesn't mean we deliver all the services after an emergency, it means that we coordinate with folks that can bring the resources to the table. Mm -hmm. So we coordinate very closely, we, um, we work very hard on the shelter operations, on how do we, would we transport individuals that are homeless to make sure that they're safe um, during a large event. Uh, we also coordinate a lot on some of the very isolated local events which are a concern. And when we start talking about El Nino, we start talking, you know, we start looking at events that could be localized flooding, they could be tornadoes, they could be a wide range of different events that impact individuals in a very isolated way. Mm -hmm. So we need to be prepared to respond to that and be able to help folks connect to the right types of services to be able to get stabilized again. Mm -hmm. And after an, an event, um, you also are part of Human Services uh, coordinates with uh, justice coordination uh, and protects consumers and can you talk about that? Yes, um, along with human services and the different services we provide, uh, justice coordination coordinates with the courts to try to make sure that the court operations are back up and running after a large event. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that the court operations uh, continue and, and that due process is provided. With consumer protection, it's very important that um, individuals in the community realize that after a storm, not everybody has their best interest in mind. Uh, there's individuals that try to capitalize through price gouging, through trying to offer services that they don't complete, and, and they really try to scam individuals. And so consumer protection actually works very close with the state attorney's office and develops a strike force 
um, after a large event and they go out into the community and they try to make sure that there aren't individuals that are poaching on, on citizens. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that you both work together uh, on the community response plan, is that correct? That's correct. And, and what does that entail? It, it's, a, it's a team effort, you know, and you know, human services and emergency management works with our community partners. Uh, forging those collaborations out there because not one single agency or entity can do it all. But you have folks like 211, uh, the American Red Cross, the Area Agency for Agency, that they all bring um, different level of subject matter expertise to help us in our, in our communities. And so it's, it's really that, that synergy that's created uh, working together to address whether it's a feeding issue, a sheltering issue, or someone lost their medicines because, you know, the, the house fell down or burnt down and, and now they need their medicines. Mm -hmm. And it is all about partnerships, isn't it? It is about partnerships. And we're really trying to build additional partnerships in our community. We're working very hard um, on that project. When you start looking at some of the different events, you know, helping somebody relocate after their house has been flooded is very important. They need to get that level of stabilization or after a house fire. Um, and then you also have you know, situations where you could have a location and condemned for safety. Um, so having partners like the Pinellas County Housing Authority to be able to help relocate individuals after their lo after a, a housing complex is condemned mm -hmm. or working with the Area Agency on Aging or DCF if there's a problem with, a, with an ALF uh, assisted living facility and, and folks might be in jeopardy. Um, there's a lot of different types of events and it's important to have partners that can help us respond. Mm -hmm. So any last words of advice for people planning to prepare themselves and their families for the, an, an extreme weather event. That's the key thing right there. Um, that first of all, it's really it comes down to preparation, being aware uh, of uh, of the threat that could potentially happen. Um, this doesn't mean that something bad is going to happen this year. It just means there's an increased possibility that we could have some severe weather. And so having that preparation on an individual level, on a family level, and even on a community level. I mean, we need churches and, and civic halls and other organizations to call us and say, hey, we'd love to volunteer our, our facility to be used as a shelter as well, or, or we have a group of volunteers that can help out. Uh, it's really coming together. So preparedness is the key thing in order to build resilience. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, I think that it's very important to know how to access resources. Uh, you mm -hmm. have community partners like 211 that has access to a great deal of information. Um, Red Cross brings a lot um, to situations and they really help to triage and they work very closely with folks. So I think it's, it's just important to be able to uh, know how to locate your resources and be aware. So I think visiting the county's website um, and, and being aware of other resources in the community before an event happens is important. Right. Well, thank you gentlemen for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you'd like more information about Pinellas County Human Services, visit their website at pinellascounty.org slash human services. And if you'd like more information about preparing for an emergency, visit Emergency Management's website at pinellascounty.org slash emergency.